Hi, I'm Rob Martinez, State Historian of New Mexico, and this is New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. There was a power struggle in the local Catholic Church of New Mexico between Bishop Lemie and Padre Martinez of Taos in the 1850s and into the 1860s. This resulted in a breach, a schism between Catholics in Taos and the bishop, and it lingered for about a decade. Sadly, the bishop and the old padre of Taos would not reconcile. Over the next decade to two decades, uh, Bishop Lamy would uh, fervently and rigorously go about reshaping the Catholic Church in New Mexico. He would have some successes, and in other areas, he would not be so successful. Um, he went after the penitentes. He wanted that movement to stop. He failed in that area. Um, he tried to uh, suppress uh, the local priests. Uh, Martinez was excommunicated and uh, other priests were suspended. But Martinez uh, was a determined man and a, a very uh, stubborn in many ways. And ultimately, uh, when he passed away in 1867, he prophesied that the problem at hand with his followers uh, in places like Taos and Mora would be fixed, would be uh, reconciled, essentially, with the arrival of the Jesuits. Um, Lamy was very good at bringing in religious orders to help, uh, in his eyes, uh, catechize and convert the New Mexico Catholics to the um, hierarchical official Catholic Church in Rome. He brought Sisters of Loreto, uh, he brought uh, the Christian Brothers, uh, Sisters of Charity, all these different uh, groups to uh, help uh, the New Mexicans, uh, in his eyes, become Catholic, at least what he thought uh, Catholics should be. Um, the Jesuits are an interesting element because up to that point of 1867, um, uh, Lamy had brought French priests, a lot of uh, his uh, uh, local uh, countrymen from France to come be priests in New Mexico. And you can see their names all over the uh, church registers into the 1870s and 1880s. The Jesuits, uh, also called uh, La Compañía de Jesús in Spanish or the Society of Jesus, uh, they were a uh, priestly order uh, founded in 1540 by San Ignacio de Loyola, uh, a very um, militant and intellectual order of priests that were of the times uh, in the uh, 1500s when there was a pre Protestant revolt, a revolution, uh, the Protestant Reformation. Uh, these uh, priests were the crack troops of the Pope. They would uh, go out to uh, revert Catholics who had become uh, Protestant. And also, they took a special fourth vow to go forth wherever the Pope sent them, without question, to spread the gospel. Well, um, these uh, Jesuits, that's their nickname, uh, they are not mendicants. They are not a begging order. They are not like the um, Franciscans or the Dominicans. You would never call a Jesuit a friar, a fraile. Um, they are not uh, mendicants. They are not a begging order. Uh, this uh, order of priests um, had always had an interesting relationship with other priestly orders within the Catholic Church and at times were um, suspended by popes because it was believed that they were too powerful, uh, maybe too independent. So by the 1860s, they are being um, targeted in Italy. So what um, Lamy does is he takes a group of Italian Jesuit priests and he brings them to New Mexico in 1867. And Father Martinez was right. Uh, one of the priests, Father Gaspari, was at Mora in 1867, 1868, and he is commissioned to hold a mission in Taos. These missions were similar to what Protestants had, these tent revivals, very passionate, very lively, um, uh, 
entertaining and uh, uh, filled with spirit. So um, Gaspari goes to Taos and holds a mission, and he's able to successfully reconcile the Martinez Catholics uh, with the rest of Lamy's Catholic Church in Santa Fe. Um, Father Martinez asked that he be buried in his own chapel. He had constructed his own chapel in Taos where he uh, administered the sacraments up until the time of his death. And so uh, Father Mariano Lucero, one of Martinez's priests, uh, did just that. Uh, that was where uh, old Padre Martinez was buried in 1867. Um, through the years, um, Lamy would uh, make trips to Rome, to Baltimore. Uh, he traveled a lot, and he was uh, very energetic in uh, reshaping uh, New Mexico and shaping his uh, bishopric into what he thought would be a solid Catholic center in the Southwest. So this is what's going on. Uh, by the 1870s, the mid-1870s, he had had enough of our old uh, parroquia, the old adobe church in Santa Fe. It had been constructed during the colonial period, probably the 1790s in that period. And so he went about uh, fulfilling his dream of having a French stone church in Santa Fe. So there are photos that show uh, what he had done was he designed this church. He had this church designed and uh, constructed around the old church and on top of it so that mass could still be held. And then ultimately when the new uh, building was almost finished, the old church was taken down and taken uh, out the front door in pieces. Uh, the only part that's left that's still there, you can go there, is if you're facing the altar to the left, there's a, there's a side chapel where La Conquistadora, uh, the little statue of Our Lady, uh, the Virgin Mary, is still held to this day. And it, it, that little chapel is made of the old adobe walls uh, of that old church. It's quite amazing and fascinating to go to. But uh, Lamy got his church, it, not completely though, um, he wanted giant spires uh, reaching into heaven, uh, but there was not enough financing, so there was no money. So today, uh, it's still not complete, but it is a beautiful example of a French church in the middle of New Mexico. Another interesting aspect of Lamy is the uh, small uh, Loreto Chapel that you can uh, visit. It's right around the corner from the cathedral. It's no longer uh, owned by the Archdiocese of Santa Fe. But um, nonetheless, um, it showed that he missed his native France. And this beautiful small chapel is uh, uh, similar to uh, small chapels you can see to this day in Paris, uh, if you could ever visit that great city. So it's a beautiful example of French Catholic Gothic architecture, and it also has a miraculous staircase uh, that uh, many believe was uh, designed and built overnight by St. Joseph himself. It's quite uh, an amazing uh, 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 work to look at. So this Frenchifying of New Mexico uh, starts in the mid-1800s and continues. Uh, by the 1870s, by mid to late 1870s, um, uh, Lamy is elevated to archbishop and uh, Santa Fe into an archbishopric. So it's the archdiocese of Santa Fe starting in the 1870s and 1880s in that period, okay? So this is the Catholic Church in New Mexico, very influential. The Jesuits will become... Uh, particularly influential, especially those Italian Jesuits who introduce uh, strong devotions to Our Lady. Uh, we had them. Uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe uh, had been part of New Mexico's Catholic uh, culture since the 1600s, but still, the Italians will bring their flavor of Jesuit Catholicism to New Mexico that will result in uh, a Catholic newspaper. Uh, La Revista Católica starting to be printed 
uh, here in New Mexico at Las Vegas by the Jesuits, and they will be very influential. But that's enough for now. We're going to talk about railroads and civil wars in New Mexico in the next episode of New Mexico History in 10 Minutes. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Hasta luego. Goodbye.